Extension functions are an amazing feature of Kotlin, which allow you to extend the functionality of a class without having internal access to it. In this video, I want to show you an example of an extension function in vanilla Kotlin code, how it works, and applying it to your Android code to make it way more comprehensible and readable. So what we have here is an extension function on a mutable list of integer. So the way you declare an extension function is you write the name of your function after the name of the class. And then you provide the parameters like a normal function. And then the object on which this function is invoked is going to have the special keyword this. And so if we wanted to actually try this out, here's how that would look. We declare a mutable list of integer. I'm printing out the list just so you can see what it looks like, one, two, three. Then we're swapping positions zero and one. And what the body of this extension function is doing is like the name implies, swapping those positions. And so the output we'd expect is 213 here. So if we run this, just to prove that it works, you do see 123, then 213. If you're coming from the world of Java, the way you probably would have done this is having a utility class filled with static methods. And the first parameter would have been the list followed by the other two parameters, index one and index two. And then you would have written similar code on the list parameter. But the extension function approach, which Kotlin takes, makes this code so much more readable because we're basically doing an action on this receiver object, the mutable list. And if we decompile the code and look at the corresponding bytecode and then use that, let's look at the Kotlin bytecode, and now let's decompile this and look at the corresponding Java code, we can see that the corresponding Java code is exactly what we described earlier, where we have a static function which takes the receiver object, the list, as the first parameter followed by the other parameters of the extension function. And then we can use those like normal in the body of the method. One thing you'll notice here is that the first line of the method says check parameter is not null, which is the receiver object, that mutable list, and that's also annotated with not null. However, if we do expect that the receiver object could be null, so that this variable list could be null, we can account for that as well. We just put a question mark here before the name of the extension function. And now in our code, we have to account for that. We say this equal equal null. And then in this case, we just maybe return because it doesn't really make sense to swap elements on a null list. This example I got from the Kotlin docs. And one of the things that Kotlin docs points out is that this action of swapping out elements in a list is pretty generic. So there's no need to restrict the functionality here to only a list of integer. In order to make this generic across elements of any type, what we could do is say fun parameterized by t, and then it's gonna be a mutable list of type t instead of type int. And now, for example, I could change this to be a and c, and then we expect that this should work like normal. So it would be abc followed by bac. I think the power of extension functions can really be seen in Android, where there's a lot of code we write, which is a lot more verbose than it could be, and also not as readable as it could be. So let me show you a quick example here. Let me add the imports. So showing a toast is a super common action in a lot of applications, and you have to say toast.make text, pass in a context, a message, and then how long you want to show it for, and then I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to actually say dot show, and then my toast never shows up. So here's a really good way to avoid making that mistake in the future. We're defining an extension function on the context class, which is an Android class, so we don't own that, but we can still define an extension function, which takes in the string message and a length, which actually has a default value, toast dot length long, and now this makes it so much easier to actually invoke this. So let me show you, we go to detail activity, I can say this dot show toast. And that's it. So there's none of the other code cruft around the length or calling dot show. This just makes it so much more readable. And in fact, because we're invoking this from the activity, which is an example of a context, we don't even need the this dot. And this is just way more readable. Another example is with glide. So the way you typically load an image in to uh, image view, you say glide.with, you pass in the context, you pass an image URL, and then you pass it into the actual image view. 
then going back into the extensions.kt file, you can define another extension function on the image view. The receiver object is an image view, so we can pass that into glide.width because we can extract the context out of any view. Pass in the image URL, which is the single parameter we have here, and we put it into the view. So this code here, where we're loading an image URL, is exactly equivalent to IV detail image dot load image with the image URL. And this is another example of how much more powerful semantically this code is due to extension functions. At a practical level, what I'd recommend is you have different files for different types of extension functions. So you wouldn't want to do what we have here in a real project, but in your Android project, for example, you could have one file for view extensions, view model extensions, repository extensions, and so on. And having that separation will really force you to think about what similar functionality can you put into these extension functions, and that will make the rest of your code way cleaner and way more readable. If you've used extension functions in your own project, I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.